Lake Champlain is home to one of North America's greatest mysteries. Join Small Town Monsters as we explore America's Loch Ness, following researchers, listening to eyewitnesses, and examining the evidence. This is On the Trail of Champ. Many people have seen something unusual on Lake Champlain. From strange humps on the water, to long necks protruding, to glowing eyes in the water at night, the encounters vary. Port Henry, New York resident Frank Horton claims to have seen the creature near Bullwaga Bay. 1980, me and Timmy Arnold were coming in off Whitney Street. Of course, you could see over the lake because it's higher than the lake. There was no buildings or anything there at the time. I looked down, saw this black thing. I didn't quite understand what it was at first, but I looked at Tim, I said, you see what I'm seeing? He says, you absolutely, he says, I see exactly what you're seeing. And uh, we watched it dig in the sand and go right out to the lake. So I drove the car down as fast as I could get there. And we got down there right to the beach. And you could see where it dug in the beach and there's waves like four or five feet coming off the, off the beach coming in at shore at the time. It was amazing. It was half the size, at least half the size of a dump truck at least. It, it, it was huge, it was huge. To see that thing that big from that distance was amazing. I said, that's Champ, bud. I said, you can't mistake that. That is a player source, no doubt, in my mind. You can't miss it. A huge body, had a long neck, and it come right back, and you could see its head perfect. It was a small, smaller head, the neck was smaller, but the body was huge. It was amazing how big this thing was. And as we were looking at it, it had white spots on it. It was like black with shiny. Uh, you could see the fins out to the side. And you could actually, I didn't have a camera at the time. I wish I had, because you never have a camera when you're, when you're riding around. You never, you know, it's just something you don't always carry. But that day, I wished I had. Vermont resident Vincent Dottilio had a strange sighting in the 1950s. We just caught some perch. We brought them up the bank. This was probably a, maybe a 20 foot cliff type thing. And where we were on top, you could see for miles left and right. All of a sudden I looked out and it was a week. Coming a small week, probably maybe six to eight inches. And all of a sudden, out of the water comes a thing like this, like a look it looked like a dinosaur, comes out and goes quite a while, quite a ways, and made a week, probably I gotta say a foot and a half, maybe maybe even bigger than that. Big one anyway. And he went for probably uh, maybe twenty feet out of the water. His, uh, he was exposed probably maybe three, three feet, maybe, neck. And he had sort of a scaly back. But, you know, other than that, I don't know what it was or where it was, but he was obviously getting fish. The thing went down and we we're just stunned. There were six of us that saw it. But this was a long time ago, 1958. Despite general regional familiarity with the monster of Lake Champlain, ridicule and criticism exist for eyewitnesses that come forward. As a result, many are reluctant to do so. But those that do truly believe what they have seen, despite how extraordinary it may sound. Never put my name on a sign down there like everybody else does. I just kept it to myself. You told you better believe we saw what we saw. There was no mistake about it. You know, it was just, just the coolest thing in life, man. And so we saw the thing and we said, what are we gonna tell anybody? Nothing. I'm not telling them what I saw. They won't believe you anyway. So probably 20 years later, maybe 25 years later, everybody started saying these things. And they explained that it was something coming out of the water looking like a dinosaur head. Yes, and that's exactly what we saw. 
Lorraine Franklin is the owner of Champ's Trading Post, a souvenir shop in West Addison, Vermont. Living in the area has made her all too familiar with people's stories of the creature she named her shop after. We have had several people that have come in that have had some very interesting stories. People that have stayed here for years or who live in the area. And a lot of them are really reluctant to tell about or to talk about their encounter um, for fear of retribution of some kind. People thinking that they're crazy or they were drunk or whatever. But there have been several that have come in that were really really legitimate sounding stories. There was one in particular from someone that we know who was very reluctant, had never told any, really anyone that he had seen Champ back in the 60s when he was working up in Burlington. Um, and he and his buddy were working on a boat um, and saw basically what was in Sandra Mancy's photo. The head and the neck come up to the boat right close to them to the point that they were like, oh my God, what is that? We don't have a camera. Um, totally freaked them out, went home, told his parents about it, and they said, don't you ever say anything about what you saw, because that's just, people won't believe you and they'll think you're crazy. And he, he has not, he has not made it public, he has not said anything. And I've talked to several other people that have been in that same situation. They'll come in because they feel comfortable, they'll kind of talk to me a little bit and see how I feel, and then they'll start to open up a little bit. Aside from hundreds, if not thousands, of eyewitness sightings over the years, there are various photographs and videos that allege to show what some believe is Champ. Just one, one frame, we can see the animal here. This is a buoy that's in the lake. Yeah. It's about five feet out of the water. Mm -hmm. And that white you see in the middle is A strange cell phone video taken in 2009 near Burlington, Vermont, shows some sort of strange creature swimming in the water. In 1977, a woman named Sandra Mancy would take a photo that would become world famous. It was a great day. It was great. It was sunny. The wind was blowing a bit, so it wasn't real hot. We had gone for maybe an hour or so, up, and my children started getting very antsy in the back seat. And so I, we decided to stop somewhere and let the children and take the shoes and socks off and just wade in the water to blow off some steam. And my husband went back to the car to get the camera, it's a, it was a, a tele, one instrumatic. And while he was gone, I watched a disturbance in the water. And then I saw the head and the neck, the top of the head and neck in that area break the surface of the water. And even then, I am thinking, wow, look at that fish. And then it kept getting taller more out of the water and more and here's the head and the neck and the back and it was facing to my left and at this point I'm just in total awe trying to figure out what it is and my husband got back and he's screaming get the children out of the water and we got the Children went up to the car, and then he helped me up the bank, and, and when he did, he handed, he put the camera in my hand, and I turned around, I watched it turn and look over its back, and then I saw it just kind of get a little fidgety, and it started going down, and then it just submerged, and we went back to the car, we get in the car, and we're like, okay, what did we see? The Mansi photo is still held up as the best evidence for the existence of a monster in Lake Champlain. Image analysis revealed that no tampering had been done to the photo itself, and that whatever was in the water was truly there that day. Author, researcher, and skeptic Benjamin Radford 
has extensively researched the Mansi photograph, conducting various experiments to determine what the object in the photo might be. Benjamin believes what Sandra Mansi took a photograph of was no more than a large log or tree trunk propelled to the surface of the water of the lake by currents and wind, a common occurrence in a lake such as Champlain. Many skeptics have argued that a majority of eyewitness sightings can be explained by misidentification of other lake animals, natural phenomenon as a result of weather, wishful thinking on the part of the eyewitnesses, and outright hoaxes. The earliest known champ hoax was perpetrated at the annual gathering of the American Canoe Association in Willisboro, New York in 1891. A group of men created a 160-foot-long monster which they dragged via towboat through the lake to the shock of the campers at the gathering as a practical joke. If the champ creature is indeed a biological organism, it would need to adhere to the 50-500 rule, which states that in order for a species to survive, there would need to be 50 specimens in the short term and 500 individuals in the long term. Whether the lake could host that many large creatures is unknown, despite the abundance of fish and food resources found in the lake. Champ researchers Scott Martis and Katie Elizabeth both claim to have had their own sightings of what they believe is Champ. Um, I was sitting out here and it was around 7.50, 7.55 p.m. and um, I was looking out towards the New York side of the lake and there's a huge white house out there, a big mansion and I happened to see these two objects in front of it. And I thought maybe it was two boats just sitting there. So I'm just watching them, and I noticed they just gradually moved to the right. Um, all of a sudden, the one in the front, the neck and head picked up, and then I would say the neck had to be at least seven to eight feet in length. And I was in total shock. I couldn't believe what I saw. I mean, how can this animal keep its neck and head up that high out of the water? To me, it was virtually impossible. And when it came up, like this, it had its chin up, and the top of the neck, right where the head was, it coiled like a snake. It was like this coil on the top. And it lowered its head and neck, stretched its neck out, and then the hump went down, and the one in the back, I never saw the head and neck on that one, that went down. I cried for two hours after that because I couldn't believe what I saw. I tried to get on video, and my camera wouldn't focus, and I'm just lucky that I have gotten you know, many videos of these animals. I wish I would have gotten that because that would have been a totally <laughs> amazing thing and something that will make history. On July 9th, 1994, I was at Battery Park in Burlington, which is up on a bluff and overlooks the Burlington Breakwater. I was watching that area at around five o'clock in the afternoon. And I saw this large object come up out of the water, a large, greenish black mound, a garbage bag color. And it, at the top of the mound was a smaller looking object on top of that. It sat there for a few seconds, then it turned apparently to the right. And it was swimming along, bobbing like this, kind of bobbing up and down, and then it stopped. And then it sank like a rock. Later, <clears throat> to try to estimate the size of this thing, I watched for boats coming by and I saw a boat about the same size as this object go by the same area. Then I went down to Perkins Pier looking for a similar boat and found one and it was about 15 feet long. So based on that, I decided this object must have been about 15 feet long. And it looked to me like it was swimming on its side with a flipper-like appendage up in the air. And it just swam along and then sank. And uh, some whales do this. They uh, thermoregulate, get rid of excess body heat, or gain body heat by exposing their flippers to the sun. And I think that's what this thing was doing. And I sort of compared it to a leatherback sea turtle, which is roughly the same color. And is the closest living thing that we know of to what they think a plesiosaur was like. I didn't have a camera with me, but I went home that same day and made two drawings of both 
the configurations it was in. And I still have them. So, you know, the drawings is the closest thing I have to reproducing what happened the very day that happened. That is what I consider to be my champ sighting. There you go. What many of these eyewitnesses describe seems almost dinosaur-like in appearance. A lot of people believe that Champ is a uh, prehistoric marine reptile, um, often a plesiosaur. Um, so in the modern day, a lot of people believe that Champ has a, a long neck and fin sort of like a seal, um, which is a little bit different from uh, 120, 150 years ago where Champ would have been more snake-like and maybe not had those seal-like fins. Um, and so that is a lot like a plesiosaur. So the Echo Center is a public museum and we interpret the Lake Champlain Basin, both the ecology, so the wildlife that lives here, its history, and the opportunities for stewardship, so the ways that the public can take care of Lake Champlain and preserve it for the future. So more often people will actually contact us um, through uh, our askecho.org. Um, um, which is just our museum information page, or they'll contact us on Facebook. And usually they'll um, say that they've, they've seen something. Sometimes they'll share videos with us. Um, we're certainly not um, a research institute in terms of deciding if um, video is real or not, or if something's a living animal or not. So really enjoy um, sharing those stories with the public. We can't really comment on whether they're real or not. <laughs> Some believe that the champ creature is actually an undiscovered species of long-necked turtle, explaining its elusiveness and long lifespan. Large snapping turtles and various other turtle species already inhabit Lake Champlain, so it's theorized that massive turtles might have much of the same behavior. William Dranginis has seen a piece of footage taken over a decade ago, which alleges to show champ quite vividly. Uh, back in December um, of last year, I was able to uh, actually go up to New Jersey and view the footage from Pete Baudet. It was actually taken here at Lake Champlain. I was always curious about it because what I saw in that video seemed to be uh, flippers. And it's it, the video in itself is parts and pieces. Uh, they were turning the camera on and off. They were having battery problems. Um, but what, what I believe that they have in that video is a plesiosaur type creature. Um, just some of the some of the movements of the fins, the uh, flippers that I saw, uh, really do show that this thing is a, a real flesh and blood animal. Katie has taken various videos over the years she claims to be of Champ. Right out here, I captured a video a couple years ago, and I saw a dark colored hump rise to the surface of the water, and it started moving like a caterpillar crawling on a table. And it was actually right where this boat is, um, a little bit past where this boat is turning. So it was between here and the island that you see in the back. It's called Mud Island. And that's where I captured that particular piece of footage, which I think is actually the best video that I have captured. I've captured many videos of these animals here in this particular area called Button Bay. Um, I've seen multiple animals, two and three, in one area. Um, also, I've gotten a lot of audio recordings of these animals communicating back and forth. And to me, the audio recordings of echolocation, which is something that normally mammals give off echolocation. I don't believe that this, you know, population of creatures in this lake are mammals because we would see them all the time since they would be more social and they would need to come up to breathe air. Despite the various competing theories and explanations for Champ, for now, the search continues.